Imagine you are in a retail store that sells clothes. You walk around and see various designs and options. Let's call this breadth. Then you pick an aisle and see multiple pieces of a design. Let's call this depth. Determining this variety and quantity of products to stock is a critical decision for retailers. So more breadth means more variety. More variety is useful because customers may be able to see something that they like and that can drive sales. At the same time, you also need depth. So if you have a larger number of units on the shelves or on stock, it means larger depth. If you don't have enough of a product, you can't sell any of it and then you're stocked out. Now, both of these are important drivers of sales. But stores don't have unlimited physical capacity. This means retailers have to make a trade-off between breadth and depth. How does one go about making these decisions. So uh, there are heuristic ways to make these decisions. What we were interested in the project here was to come up with an analytical data-driven approach to making these decisions. On one hand, we have assortment planning. You have to look at all possible combinations of these products and that quickly blows up. So even if you have just 25 products that you're looking at, the number of possible combinations of these 25 products is in the tens of million. One has to look at smart, efficient ways to make these decisions. On the other hand, we have inventory planning, which is complicated too. There is uncertainty in demand. You don't know how many customers will come in. There is uncertainty in your supply. Because you place an order today, you do not know exactly when it will come in. So if you put both of these pro problems together, it doesn't become any easier. The existing work on integrating these two decisions has a limitation. As it assumes no product replenishment is made. Uh, what is implicit in these models is that the uh, shelves, the store shelves will get progressively empty over the course of the selling season because you're not replenishing your stock. The study assumes that the retailer sets a one-time target inventory level for each product and replenishes items upon sale. So that is the gap our model tries to, our analysis tries to address. How do you make these assortment and inventory decisions in a combined, in an, in an integrated fashion, uh, taking into account replenishments? We broke this down into two bits. One is to come up with a way to model customer choice. So if you have a customer who comes into a store and looks at the different products that are on offer, how does the customer choose from among these offered products? So for that, we borrowed a, a model, the multinomial logit model. So that is one part. And the second side or the second piece of our model uh, considers the uh, inventory replenishments. So there uh, we model uncertainty in the inventory uh, replenishment times. And putting these two things together gave us a model to make the assortment and inventory decisions in an integrated fashion. A series of approximations and simplifications were utilized to develop a model that was tractable and had good performance in practice. The output is a computationally tractable method to make these inventory and assortment decisions in an integrated fashion when one also models uh, product replenishments taking place periodically. Now our model does make some simplifying assumptions, but nevertheless it is an important first step towards addressing this very complex, very difficult uh, business problem. The findings can be categorized into three sets. The first set indicates that the model allows retailers to make customized assortment decisions depending on the store size, large versus small stores. This model can be used to understand what should be the type of products, how many different products, how much of each product should be stocked in that particular store. So instead of making a blanket decision across stores of different sizes, now our model can potentially be used to make more tailored, better assortment decisions. Secondly, the model provides efficient ways for stores to carry out a what-if analysis to understand different trade-offs. Having a more efficient, a more responsive supply chain, by that I mean having lead times which are short, uh, can, be, uh, uh, can be a way to complement store space. So what do I mean by that? Even if you have a small size store, you may be able to carry a wider assortment simply because you can replenish stock quickly. The third finding suggests that when deciding which products to stock, 
it is essential to consider factors beyond just profit margins. You may have products which are very profitable, but you may also want to stock other products simply given the lead times. Right? So there could be certain products which are not very profitable, which have a lower margin, but they have high demand. If the lead times are longer, then you may also want to focus on these types of products, not just the high margin products alone. To assess the performance of our method against the optimal assortment, we conducted an evaluation by generating synthetic test problems. Now, the optimal assortment is not something that can be uh, uh, obtained in practical real size instances because the problem cannot be solved within a reasonable amount of time. Our method is approximate, yet it gives us solutions within a reasonable amount of time. The solution method that we have uh, does quite well in practice. It is able to uh, get very close to the optimal solution and we find that roughly in 80% of the test cases that we ran, our, uh, our method uh, recovered the optimal solution. And the gap was very small in the remaining cases. Interestingly, this model finds its application in various use cases. A very basic use case would be a large retailer trying to understand uh, what should be the assortments uh, to be offered in the different types of stores that it, that it operates. Another uh, way to use this model to, would be to understand the impact of having a more responsive supply chain. What kind of products would you offer? At what uh, levels would you stock them? Now, it's a very relevant problem for many retailers. These are decisions they have to make anyway and our model gives us a way to make these decisions perhaps in a better fashion using data, using analytics.